My name is Louise Shannon and I'm one of the health and safety consultants at Citation and in today's video we're going to look at some of the issues surrounding construction dust, namely silica and wood dust and we'll also take a little look at asbestos as well. So today we're looking at some of the, the types of dust that people working in the construction industry may come up against, namely silica and wood dust. We're going to look at how they're produced, we're going to look at some of the health effects they may cause, how we should be controlling them, and of course how Citation can help you manage this. So what is dust and how is it produced? Dust is produced when we're working with our products, whether that is wood or our silica based products. Whether it's cutting, sanding, grinding, mixing, demolishing, all these processes can cause dust to be released. In construction, that is our day to day activities, so therefore this is something we have to proactively manage throughout the lifetime of the project. So what is silica then? Silica is a naturally occurring substance. It's found in different quantities and different types of rocks throughout the world. It's when we work with these products, whether it's cutting, blasting, grinding, it produces a dust that goes into the air. Some of that's dust we can see, it's the dust we're cleaning up as we go along, but some of it's the smaller particles that we can't see that can be the bigger problem. Another issue affecting the construction industry is asbestos. Asbestos, as we know, was a popular material for used in building, construction, maintenance, renovations for many years until its use was banned in 2000. However, that does still mean it's present in many of the spaces we'll be working in even today. Asbestos, like silica, the fibres can get right into the bottom of our lungs and from there the natural defences can't overcome them. This can lead to long-term health conditions such as mesothelioma, asbestosis and other lung-related cancers. Many of these are life limiting or life ending. So, what are the health effects from dust? There's the dust that we see as we're cleaning up as we go along, but quite often it's the dust we can't see that causes us the most problems. The very small fine particles, which often aren't visible to the naked eye, can be breathed in right into our lungs. We call this respirable dust, whether this is silica or wood. When it's in the bottom of our lungs, there's not a lot our bodies can do to get rid of it and it can lead to permanent and life-changing uh, health conditions. It's not just inhaling the dust that can cause us a problem. There are other ways that this dust can affect us. Whether this is through ingestion into our uh, digestive tract, we can get that by poor hygiene if we're not washing our hands and we're handling food and drink. Or again, some of that dust that we do breathe in gets caught by our natural defence mechanism. So the mucus in our nose, in our sinuses, in our mouths can trap these particles. We do get rid of some of this when we blow our nose or spit it out, but unfortunately some of it does get swallowed. It makes its way down the digestive system and from there it can cause local irritation. It can also here cross into the bloodstream and that then can transfer these harmful particles around the body where it can damage other organs. There is another mode where we can be affected by the dust in our working environment. This is by direct contact. If we're not wearing the correct PPE, it can cause local abrasions. Silica by nature is abrasive. Again, if we're not wearing our PPE such as gloves, our jackets or our eyewear, where we come into contact with that silica could lead to uh, dermatitis and infections. If this affects the delicate part of the eye, such as the lens, this could lead to permanent and damaging um, issues to the eyesight. So what do we need to do to control our exposure to dust in the workplace? Our starting point, like anything, is our risk assessment. And as this is involving substances hazardous to health, it needs to be a COSH assessment that we consider. Dust has what we call a workplace exposure limit or a well, and it's so important to make sure that we do not expose our employees or other people to values over this limit. What controls do we need to put in place to manage this uh, exposure to dust? We need to think about, can we change the process we're doing? Can we find a different process that doesn't produce dust? If not, can we reduce the amount of dust we produce by changing materials, changing the equipment we work with, and maintaining our equipment to the highest standards to produce less dust? Then we need to think about controlling dust at source. On tool extraction will stop that dust entering the atmosphere, therefore not being able to be breathed in by anyone in the area. Considering things with LED and this, this on tool extraction is only going to be as good as it's maintained and its filters. So it's vital that this is considered as part of that process. Training of employees, operatives, contractors, working with the, these processes producing dust is really important. Raising awareness of the health impacts of dust is vital because it's not always the dust we see, as we've said, that can cause those issues. The last line of defence is PPE. 
And it's vital that we get this right. It's vital that we're wearing the correct PPE, that it's appropriate for the, for the person, things such as face fit testing. And it's vital that people are trained into wearing it properly, maintaining it properly, using it properly. Um, and hopefully those control measures all kind of put together will reduce everyone's exposure to dust. With dust being such a prevalent issue in the construction industry, it's vital to make sure we're checking our controls are effective. That may involve dust monitoring and certainly will involve a health surveillance programme, carrying out lung checks, skin checks, just to make sure our controls are working exactly as they should. So how can Citation help you with this? First of all, you've got access to all the resources on the Atlas platform. This includes fact sheets, toolbox talks, posters, signs. There's a wealth of material there for your disposal. You've also got your field consultant and not forgetting the 24 hour advice line. So if you need any support, please just don't hesitate to get in touch with Citation.